Monsieur Doucet, are you there? Answer me if you're there. Why is that His Excellency the Bishop John Villadeau? You are now our late, Your Excellency. I did the best I could. It's not easy for a bishop to find time for a special appointment. You, you haven't changed much. You have, you look old. I brought some information about the different rehabilitation programs that the church offers next prisoners. I thought it might be of use to you. I haven't much time to spare. I'd like to know the purpose of this meeting, Monsieur Doucet. You can drop the Monsieur Doucet. For years I went to sleep in prison, dreaming of the day you looked me in the eye and called me by my name. Simone. <laughs> That was a long time ago, Monsieur Doucet. We are no longer students. Our lives had led us along very different paths. The fact that yours hasn't treated you very kindly. Why were you so determined to see me again? If you think you've been the victim of some error, I hardly see how I can correct the wrongs of the judicial system. I am a bishop. Speak to a judge. For years, I went around protesting my innocence. I beg him to call you back again to testify again. But you were untouchable. Mr. Villadeau is preparing to enter the priesthood. Perhaps you've forgotten, but I haven't. It's engraved in my mind, my heart, my soul, my flesh. If someone else here, you promised that this meeting would be private. They're friends. Old acquaintances from Rubberball. Who are these men? What are you going to do to me? I am a man of the church. You remember Father Saint Michel, Lydia and de Rosier, the wealthy heiress from Paris, Countess Marie Lower de Tilly, a direct descendant of the Rabal. All of those people are dead. You're being the cop, Monsieur Doucet. This is ancient history, as outdated as the Countess de Tilly was at the time. This is absurd. This young man is mean. He's handsome the way people said I was in those days. That is Count Valier de Tilly, the Countess's son. And that little sneak there in his shoe. I'm leaving! They're all like me, victims of a judicial error. We learned a lot of things in prison, even how to kill. We've been rehearsing our little show for three years just for you, Your Excellency. It would be a shame if you had to leave it prematurely. I have no idea what you're talking about. I run it in jail for years for something I never did. There's only one person alive who knows what really happened one September morning, 1912. Do you realize that you are holding a bishop hostage? I just invited an old schoolmate for a little theatrical evening like we used to organize in those days. By the way, I'll be playing Timothy Doucet, my dear father. Just what do you want from me? For now, nothing. Just sit and watch. Then we'll see. In the spring of 1912, you must remember, back at the boys' school in Rotterdam, we were rehearsing the martyrdom of San Sebastian by the Italian poet Gabriele D'Annunzio. I was San Sebastian. Sine, the saint's friend, was being played by Count Valier de T, the one you nicknamed Lily White. Caesar said, take him to Apollo's wood. Tie him to the trunk of the finest bay tree. Then let your arrows fly into his naked body. Until your quiver is empty. Until his naked body is like that of a wild hedgehog. Yes, Sine, yes, my archers. That is my desire. It shall be beautiful. It shall be beautiful. But Caesar said then, cut his beautiful locks and place them on the altar as a sign of atonement that I may shed my tears upon them. Might we simply cut some woman's hair and take it to the emperor? I shall be reborn today, but that I may be reborn. Oh, my archers, I must die. I must die. We shall break our bows. Draw your bows. Where is your love for me? You love me and you would do nothing more than to serve my fate. Yet you would obstruct the fulfillment of my destiny and the completion of this cycle of my eternity. You love me, yet you do not exalt in my mystery. I say unto you, I shall be reborn. Have no fear. Verily, I assure you. My lord, we shall be killing our love. If you truly love me. Weep! Weep the beautiful Adonis, he is dying! Weep! Weep the beautiful Adonis, he is dead! Weep! Too soon! Too soon for the unserious slave girl. 
Go back to the wings. I can't hear a thing in the wings. I don't mind replacing Sean Bullido. Just don't yell at me. Back to the wings, please. Isn't somebody supposed to tie me up? The archers of the Mesa are. But so where are the archers? They're late. Like Sean Bilodeau. We haven't seen him for almost a week. Why do we have to tie up Stan Sebastian anyway? I never saw anybody who wanted to die so bad. It's to prevent his body from falling when he's hit by the arrows. He's thought of everything. He really wants to die. He wants to die in order to escape eternal darkness, Simone. A man who truly believes in something can conquer the unconquerable, even death. Please, continue. A man must kill his love, that it may be reborn seven times more ardent. O oh, archers, archers, if thou dost truly love me, let your love be shown unto me by the pain of your arrows. That's worth the name throws himself across his master's body, like Mary Magdalene upon Jesus, like Lazarus upon our Lord. Ah! I met Lazarus after his resurrection. You fall on him like a corpse. I realize that such signs of affection are not very common here in Roboval, but San Sebastian is your love. And he is asking you to kill him. Just imagine the person you love most in the world asking you such a favor, such a sacrifice. It's a moment of ultimate love. Is that where the arrows come in? Ye yes, but I haven't decided how we're going to manage the arrows yet. It's merely a detail. Carry on. 22 arrows shot at somebody from 10 feet away. You call that a Yeah, you said the same thing last year about St. Alphonse's ascension, but poor martyr ended up at the doctors because the doors of heaven refused to open. The saints to say got more applause than all his passion. It's hardly the same situation. We were unable to rehearse that detail. Carry on. There's only 78 days to go until our deputy comes from Quebec City to give us our diplomas. Will you simply concentrate on the text, my children? Deliver it with as much fervor as possible. Do you really think the deputy's going to like our performance? Boys kissing each other and caressing on stage? I don't know if people around here are going to like it. Remember last year when I ran my fingers through Valier's hair? I was a horse. It's not the same. That's what I mean. You were just a horse, but for a few moments it felt like the audience had lost their taste for writing. I'm sorry. Simon didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Father Saint-Michel. The truth is, he's right. No one understands me. I try to offer them modern productions, but I keep forgetting we're at the mercy of an audience of peasants whose taste is limited to operettas or light comedies or melodramas, and the clergy is only interested in seeing saints stabbed to death and stoned and burned at the stake, carved into little pieces and served as hors d'oeuvres with spicy sauces. I feel utterly defeated. That's it, utterly defeated. I'll repeat that to myself until I'm finally able to accept my defeat. I feel utterly defeated. But there are people who appreciate what you're doing. The, the Brother Superior, the, the Indians always laugh. Oh, yeah. My mother would miss one of your productions for anything in the world. Well, there are a few aristocrats, such as Madame the Countess, who know how to appreciate such things. But theater should reach everyone. One can do anything in the theater, you know. One can reinvent life. One can be in love, jealous, insane, <coughs> tyrannical, possessed. One can even lie or cheat. One can kill without feeling the slightest remorse. One can die of love, of hate, of passion. One can conquer the unconquerable. If thou dost truly love me. Weep! Weep! The beautiful is not as he is dying! Weep! Please go back to the wings. If you don't like it, why don't you just get Bill a He just showed up backstage. It's about time. You gentlemen can rehearse the last scene from San Sebastian's martyrdom while I will arrange for Monsieur Villados. Come along, please.
Thus I rushed towards you, and as if driven by a fiery passion hitherto unknown to me, I pressed your body to mine. Tell me that you love me. I feel good when I put with you. Tell me that you love me. You remind me of a girl when you act like that. I hate it. I feel good with you. But you've never felt so good with anyone else? That I've never felt so good with anyone else in my whole life. Oh, the quaking of my soul. I can feel my soul in this tree quaking down to the tips of the most hidden roots. I've seen it not. I'm willing to attend this performance so long as it stays within the limits of decency. Whom amongst you would I elect? He who takes aim with the deadliest arrow and releases with such terrible force. Verily, I shall know that man loves me and will always love me. So then, you have my bow. Press it to my lips before you draw it. May it touch my lips and my soul. You're making a caricature of the Father Saint Michel. You're making yourself look like angels, guardians of the truth. You're coloring everything with a perverse, erotic overtone. You're, you're mistaking moral virtues and pagan acts. You're the last one who should talk about morality. My destiny must be fulfilled. I must die at the hands of men. Hurry. Go ahead, say your lines. What are you waiting for, Bilodeau? Monsieur Bilodeau, I was telling your classmates what a great adventure theater is. What an exalting adventure where one can recreate the world, provided that the actors are present for the rehearsals. I haven't been to rehearsal because my mother's forbidden me to come. You're going to have to find yourself another slave. And why, may I ask? She tried to make my costume. What happened? She ran out of material? No, she had too much left over. Her and Madame Levine and Madame Scott got together to work on the costumes, and, and they decided the costume is too big a work for what we were supposed to wear. And they said that hell would freeze over before they let, they let their kids walk around half naked on stage like that. Madame Levine calls her costumes filthy rags. Madame Scott says they're perverse candy. And my mother calls them crack tablers. So I won't be coming to rehearsal anymore. Neither will Caesar or the archer with the wanton eyes. And the way things are going, you're going to be missing a whole regiment of centurions, along with the angels that we're already missing. John, come over here. Please, you have a great deal of talent. My mother says you better not try to get me to come back. Anyway, she says, forget it. She didn't say anything. I'd appreciate you finishing your sentence, Monsieur Villado. I did finish. I got nothing else to say. Damn liar. You were going to say something else. Come on, tell us what Villado's mummy said this time. Yeah, now what is that harpy made of? Harpy? I don't even know what harpy means. Anyway, my mother made me a harpy, but yours is crazy. You must understand what that means. Crazy? Why can't you talk like everyone else, damn foreigner? His lily white lordship shows up here without a cent, gets the priests to pay for his education, Steals our friends. And then he dares go around talking with his mouth all puckered up like a hen's ass. Lousy imported snobs. Just what did she have to say this time, your gossiping mother? You must understand what gossip means. You're usually gentler than that with the young boys. Uh, she says that the more performances you put on, the sicker you get. And that some of the boys, like Valier and Simon, are starting to catch your sickness. Madame Levine and Madame Scott say you're like the plague. And when the plague hits somewhere, you either get rid of it or you have to leave yourself. What plague were those respectable ladies referring to, Monsieur Bilodeau? What plague, Monsieur Bilodeau? How should I know? Why don't you go ask them yourself if you're brave enough? Then they're explaining your little problem to the principal right now. I refuse to allow those old prudes to destroy four years of work! So we're sick, eh? Now that we're all alone, why don't you tell us what we got? Yeah, you said something about a plague. Strange, but I haven't noticed anything on my skin. Have you seen well, it's, it's not a sickness you can see on your skin. It's inside you. It, it burns inside you like, like the flames of hell. It's, it's like hell on earth. But when I came across the two of you in the attic last week, I saw your sickness plain as can be. God made it rain fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah because of that. He said, let me never see another man do it because the same thing will happen all over again. 
that just because of you and Father Saint Michel, Roberval could become another Sodom and Gomorrah. I told Father Saint Michel what I saw in the attic last week. He just stared at me like, like the Antichrist. My mother says Father Saint Michel is the Antichrist. That he listened to every word, and he kept sighing and patting me and saying, "Be more precise, Bildo. More precise." I, ta I talked to him about hell. But he got me so confused, I started to wonder who knew more about hell, him or my mother. So you told your mother all about it, too? Are you crazy? Well, I talked to my mother about it, and she had nothing to say except that it might just naturally experience what you called hell. That doesn't count. Your mom's crazy. You call Valier's mother crazy once more, and I'm going to show you what hell's really like. Say you're sorry. Go on. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Billy White, you're lucky you always got someone to defend you, you damn lily-livered sissy. How about you, Simon? Did you tell your father? I'm sure he'd be real happy to find out about it. Everybody thinks that Tubi makes such a fine pair, but nobody suspects. Suspects what? What are you getting at, Villado? Your sickness is that you do things with Valier like he was a girl. And he's so sick, he calls that love. Aren't you getting a bit carried away, Villado? Ask Lee White when he said when you left the attic last week. There's a hell of a difference between what happens in the attic. He said that when you have a lot of feeling for somebody, and you can't explain what it is, that's what love is. And he said he feels that way about you. He said you feel the same way about him. Shut up, Bilodeau! The way also says you didn't even have to talk about it together. Then when you ever you have a fight with him and you run off and set a fire somewhere, he understands that you're suffering from love. That's enough, Bilodeau! All this time you chose punishment is nothing compared to what's in store for the two of you! But it shall be beautiful. But it shall be beautiful. What are you doing? You're sick. Well, I'm going to show you the things of hell, Bilodeau! Come on, Zach! So you call upon your terrible love from the darkest depths again! Your love again and again, your eternal love. <laughs> Why did you stop? What a pity. It was so beautiful. Oh, I understand. I didn't need you to explain, Timothy. You wanted to be a surprise. Of course. Children, we are going to have an opening night the likes of which has never been seen in Robert Ball. Father Saint Michel is terribly audacious in his productions. I love it. I do love it. Such a divine way to break the monotony. Good evening, Mother. Good evening, my son, Count. Aren't you going to say good evening to me, Monsieur Pivodeau? I think he's still caught up in his part. About which part are you playing? Simone was supposed to play Saint Sebastien. Which means it isn't the saint who is tied to the tree. What an ingenious man Father Saint Michel is, not afraid to break all the theatrical conventions. I'm afraid that poor young man has inherited all his mother's worst faults, no manners at all. I might say the same for your son, Timothy. Why did Simon run off like that? You seem worried, Valier. The rehearsal exhausted me. It was particularly hectic. You, on the other hand, the gradient. I have the most wonderful news to tell you. Timothy, a chair for the count, please. Valier, that's what Timothy is here I for. I have been acting all day, madam. I feel the need for some reality. You know how I hate it when you remind Timothy of his absence. You didn't wait for me. I stopped off at the hotel Roverball. Really? The very day who and his wife have just arrived. I met him two years ago. The Baron and his son were on a fishing trip. Caught ten of them wanted each salmon myself, but she didn't catch nothing. So I promised the Baroness the next time she comes back these ways, I'd teach her how to go fly cast. Ten I hope you're not too upset with me because I'm late. It's just that wood is the hardest day for me to be in your service. I know it's the day the train comes from Quebec City, but if we could just make it Mondays or Fridays instead. Timothy, I beg of you, please keep your distance when you speak to me. It's like being in the middle of a distillery. My apologies, ma'am. What's the wonderful news, mother? I met Mademoiselle Lilian de Rosier, the young Parisian woman who arrived by balloon today. A young Parisian woman in a balloon, Timothy? That's right, a real Parisian. Not the kind one sees in one's dreams. No, Valier, the kind one sees in Paris. A real good-looking woman. And a real lady, too. She says she's a direct descendant of the Palazzo de Rosers? Pelotre, Timothy. Francois Pelotre de Rosier, Timothy. Pelotre de Rosier is one of the inventors of the aerostat, of balloons, Timothy. 
That is why the Sufi asked Mademoiselle de la Zier to pose to him for Mary Miss Publicity for her to put on the share of the same. Three months ago, just before her departure, she met your father. I can only hope you're telling the truth. I would never make up such a story as Timothy. The Countess is telling the truth. The heiress says she saw your father cavalier de tea in the salon in Paris. What else did she say? Many more people have joined the ranks of the Royalist Party. Emile Cohn, that dreadful man responsible for our fleeing to Canada, resigned. And his law denying the clergy any power in the schools has been challenged. Your father is at the head of this movement. The dissolution of the Third Republic and the return of the new monarchy are imminent. Your father will be coming back to Guinness so that we can attend the coronation of Philippe the VIII. We left France with the Loyalist religious orders as fugitives, but we shall return as conquerors. How marvelous! I promised the young lady that you would stop by the Hotel Robert to thank her. If we go back to France, will we take Timothée with us? Timothée has been your footman for six years. We couldn't possibly manage without him. But one doesn't change footmen the way one changes one's socks rarely. And Simon? He'll go wherever his father goes. If you think I'd leave my Simon behind, you're off the rocker. My dear departed wife, I promised you that I'd give Simon nothing but the best because it was the best, the most beautiful child born since our Savior. Just before she drew her last breath, I promised her that he wouldn't need the miserable poor life we led. He's my pride and joy, and any man's going to want to take his pride and joy to play in the most beautiful city in the world. Well, <laughs> finally some good news. When do we leave? How impatient you are, Timothy. Good evening, Father Saint Michel. Well, good evening, Countess. Good evening, Monsieur Doucet. I have wonderful news. My husband is returning. We'll be able to attend your performance. It's the most extraordinary theatre. I have finished Ali's costume. I'm afraid it is more beautiful than Saint Sebastian's. You needn't work on them anymore, Countess. I am afraid the martyrdom of Saint Sebastian may never see the light of day in Roboval. You will have the same problems as last year, Father. And yet, in spite of St. Francis' fall, you did get permission to start over again this year. The problem is more complicated than that, and I'd rather not involve you. Madame Villadeau and her friends spoke to the principal? Among others. They were simply the fourth group of parents to show up in his office today. He's been in such a faithful ally. But there's simply no way he can continue to defend my artistic projects. He's sending me on a retreat to the mother house in Quebec City. I feel utterly defeated! Uh, Father Saint-Michel, do you believe in your plan? Of course I do. Then why not try to conquer the unconquerable? Valier is right. It is such a pity that my husband won't get to see your play. I saw just a bit of it when I arrived here. It seemed so bold, so modern. Valier was reciting love, love, and Simone, your son, Timothée, was passionately kissing the young Villadeau boy, but I probably had the line all wrong. Father, perhaps you can help the goddess explain what's going on. I'd really like to know. I think Valier could be of more help to you than I could. Monsieur, what was Simon doing with Villadeau? He, he was standing very close and speaking to him. But, but the, the poor saint can, can barely hear him through the, the clamor of celestial voices, and so the archer has to bend over him to make himself heard. We can't possibly be talking about the same scene, Valier, or we were simply trying to minimize the intensity of Father Saint Michel's staging. I saw it. Simone was kissing Villageau with a passion that would, that would make all the ladies in Robert blush with envy. It is great art. Madame, Monsieur, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go have a little artistic chat with my son! Simone! Simone! Even Timothy seems to be carried away by your art. You have accomplished great things, Father Saint Michel. We are going to miss you. Aren't we, Valier? Valier? Don't tell me you're off on the Mediterranean again. We must get back to the manor and prepare everything for your father's return. Weep! Weep the beautiful Adonis! He is dead! Weep! Weep the beautiful Adonis! 
too soon.
that aerostat, it's mine. I got it in exchange for a few quiet lies. If I could ever be of any assistance to you, I would be delighted. Be careful, madame. I might take you at your word. Simon! You are interrupting, young man. Oh, pardon me. What are you doing here? An errand for my mother. Undoubtedly another patient for you, doctor. Soon you will need a nurse to assist you. I went to see you, but your father told me that you were sick and couldn't have visitors. I thought that you'd at least come out and say goodbye to Father Saint Michel. And what about the fire at the train station? I wasn't sick. What's with a lie? Aha, uh -huh. it would seem you have a disciple, madame. I wonder what his approach was. He you seems to have been convincing. Really doesn't want to understand my philosophy, do you, Doctor? I land in a robot expecting to meet a few Indians with war paints and feather headdresses. Just imagine my surprise when I met a real lady. Not from the recent Napoleonic nobility. No, a true aristocrat strand. Listen, <laughs> Mademoiselle de Rosier. That's the second time you've interrupted me, young man. Pardon me, please continue. She approached me and asked whether I knew her husband, Count de T. She got to you too, Wade. The minute a Frenchman arrives in Robert Ball, the Countess pounces on him like a cat on a mouse, asking if he's seen her husband. The woman's situation is fascinating. Within five minutes, I knew all of her troubles. Her appearance betrayed her misfortune. Her dress is several summers out of style. Her face is the face of one who never has enough to eat. When she told me she'd been hoping of news from her husband for five years now, it was all I could do not to burst into tears. You find that sad? I was devastated. Well, people around here make fun of her. They think it's pretty funny the way she takes her shack for a castle, the way she calls the surrounding countryside hers, the way she calls La Saint John the Mediterranean. So I talked to her about her husband. I pretended to have met him in some of the most fashionable salons in all of Paris. I dug up some gossip about a few old fallen barons and dead viscountesses forging some utopian revolution. You should have seen the look on her face, her smile when I told her I had connections in France that could get news to her husband. I brightened up her day. Her son is supposed to bring me some letters. to a poor woman. I should be ashamed. I made your mother happy, something which hasn't happened to her in five years, and I should be ashamed. Her happiness will last as long as it's alive. Unless, of course, you would insist upon distressing her. I'd like to speak to you in private, Simon. Simon. Get your hands off me. Do you see where lying leads, madame? You don't seem to understand. These boys have a problem with the truth. Their eyes betray them. A pity you work only on bodies, doctor. If you cared ever so slightly about the soul, you would see what I see. You'll have to excuse me. I'm beginning to find the spring breeze <clears throat> tiresome. Simone, don't forget to tell your father I want to talk to him. I'll go with you. I loathe moments of truth. Do wait for me, my friend. The, the whole village is over at the school. At the last minute, the principal assembled the choir to replace our play. We would have been performing the martyrdom of Saint Sebastian at this very moment. And the deputy arrived from Quebec City at noon time, and the whole village turned out to greet him. And then I stayed home with my mad mother. I was too unhappy. I missed you. Are you going to cry now? I don't understand why you ridiculed my mother. Look at that, Valier. You want to see my ass too? Thanks to your goddamn mother. That's 
right. My father did that to me. Thanks to your mother black about what I did to Bilodeau. I really appreciate the brave way you stood up for me. You could have said anything to confuse her. When he found me, he was like a mad dog. He grabbed me by the arm and drove me home. When we got inside the house, he went crazy. He thought, uh, took out all the old dresses we'd saved after my mother died. And he yelled, is this what you want to look like? Is that it? Then he tied me to the bed and drank a bottle of gin. Then he took off his belt. How many arrows could your goddamn save, kids? I passed out a couple times, but he kept on swinging until I got 22 lashes, and he hit hard, really hard, over and over, again and again. I was lucky only the train station burned down. So when I finally got a hold of myself, shit, I could have set the whole tower of rubble while I'm fired. I still have two they punished. You're getting to be as crazy as your mother, Valier. The only reason my father ever comes by your place is because he hopes she'll take him to Paris someday. Your mother hasn't paid him in three years. He brings you all your firewood every winter, and whenever we have scraps left over from supper, we bring them to you, as do your neighbors. I shall have Timothy punished. You're getting to be as crazy as I ever. you to say that. She's not crazy. She's just playing her part. She's playing her part. She never could have survived the poverty and the isolation we've had to endure since my father left if she hadn't believed in her stories. You find that normal? You're going to be as crazy as her, saying what you did about the two of us to build up? See, well, let's go Don't you life. understand? It's over. I want nothing to do with you. The attic, the hayloft, the closet, the lake. Every time I'm with you, I'm risking another beating. It's time. I have to start thinking about girls. Left. 
the Countess's son? Did Bilodeau tell you that? Ow, not so hard, it hurts. I know that you have kissed him. I have never seen two young men look at each other so intensely before. I can understand why you're attracted to him. He's very seductive, which is more than one can say about the young girls around here. They tend to be a little on the plump side. That's not true. There's plenty of pretty girls around here, madame. But they don't have to wear a suit of armor around their middles to look thin, either. You'll probably have scars on your back by the end of the day, too. Ow! You are obviously not used to talking to women. You have a most unusual approach to seducing them. Now then, did you or didn't you kiss that young man? The only one I ever kissed was Bilodeau, and that was just to piss him off. I can tell you're lying. I'll show you if I'm lying. No, no! I refuse to witness such debauchery. This is a terrace, not a bedroom. The worst thing that can happen to me is I'll get another whipping. They can just follow the scar marks. You needn't fear a thing. With me, you're not risking the whip. A few white lies, maybe, but it's not the whip. This is a terrace. A terrace. The hotel's main terrace. Nobody could get away with that kind of a kiss in public. It simply wasn't done. You start to believe your own story? Did I awaken you? 
you should have slept in the south wing of the manor tonight. So now we have the south wing. Well, of course. I've decided to follow the wing of hope. Do you like it? Yes, it's a fine name. Tomorrow the architects are coming to see about the north wing. It must be ready before your father returns. I was thinking of calling it the wing of the homecoming. Do you want to dance? No, I'm exhausted from my day on the lake. If you are always exhausted, where is your energy, my son? Where? I watch you grow, and all I can say is you are growing, and it is exhausting you. Centimeter here, centimeter there, and, and there is nothing more to be said. Ever since you're falling out with Simo, you have become as elusive as, as your reflection on the Mediterranean. Shall we dance? I'm going to bed. It's not by going to bed now that you'll know how to dance at Simo's engagement party. Madame Guilherme's son stopped by to invite us to the party. I won't be going. Valier, your best friend is getting married and you want to pay him the courtesy of attending if you get I'm going to sleep in the wing of hope. I have to get up early in the morning. Just what do you intend to do tomorrow? Spend another day meditating on the Mediterranean? I never see you anymore. You leave the house at dawn, you come home after dark. And furthermore, you've been neglecting your appearance. You are a count, Valier. I noticed your hands at the dinner table. They're beginning to look like the hands of a lady. I have noticed yours as well. You come back from your horticultural sessions with your hands all scraped and rough, your face stained with earth, mud in your hair, grit in your mouth. Timothy told me the nuns barely had time to finish their evening prayers. You missed the spectacle, Valier. All the young novices running out. You are so afternoon. good at avoiding subjects you find unpleasant. Mediterranean, as you would say. It's my hands have already betrayed me. I won't try to keep it from you any longer, but please promise me you won't scream. As if I constantly went around screaming. Timothy, some linden tea, please. I am listening. Since I finished school, I have been working with the Indians as a fishing guide. Never in the history of France has ever been. We are no longer part of that. And you expect me not to stay home? Oh, my How can you expect a mother to calmly accept that her son, a direct heir to the throne of France, a possible dauphin, is working? Working! The most vile, the most infamous of all occupations for an aristocrat, and you, my son, has stooped so low as to become a guy for tourists. A valet, a porter, a sad Yes, mother! I shall disown you. You are a coward. You are a coward like your I didn't hear the end of your sentence. Would you mind repeating it? Don't you want to know how to walk? Would you mind repeating your sentence? Shall we walk? Timothy, what did my mother say? He's down in the kitchen. I'm afraid you're wrong. Thank you, Timothy. That's what I thought she said. You can go back to the scullery now and feed the rats. You are truly Unique, Mother. Most people allow their past to grow foggier over the years. Who would dare claim that the Count Philippe Antoine de T is- Who would dare claim that a man and a bravonic man who left his wife and his son without a cent in some remote region of Canada returned to France to play a 20th century crusade to a man who didn't contact his family once in five years to say whether he was dead or alive? dare make such an audacious claim. They have ten times more courage than he did. If I had been secretly working since I was 13 years old, I would have perished a long time ago. He is a coward. The 
coward. Coward like all men. You speak with the voice of anger. I prefer to believe what you wrote. What do you mean? That letter. What letter? The one I found in the drawer when we leave you the writing desk. I caught the chambermaid, going through your personal effects. I dismissed her on the spot. There was a torn letter. I wanted to put it back into the drawer, but inadvertently the word love caught my eye, and I understood immediately that it was a letter to you. Where is the letter? It is no longer Where here. is it? In good hands. Who's good hands? I imagined how happy it would make your father to read that epistle. Perhaps I had no right, but my enthusiasm made me forget that I should respect your privacy. I glued the letter together. I took it myself to Lydia de Rosier that she might send it off to her connections in France. Yes, I read it, and you should be grateful to me. Your praise of the man in your life was overwhelmingly poetic. I could hardly hold back my tears when you said that you missed him so terribly that you sometimes longed for death, like Saint Sebastian. You are my first love, and shall always remain so. Ever since our bitter separation, relentlessly, I recreate you, I compose you, I bring you to life, I kill you and resuscitate you. I miss you, your eyes of onyx, your skin of ivory, your body of marble. My breath comes too fast, for I have forgotten the rhythm of yours. My lips stumble on your name. For they have lost the heaven to call it. My hands reach out in the hope of your return, and are filled with nothing but my tears. Oh, beloved, if indeed you do love me, let your love be shown unto me. I love you. And I shall wait for you forever. Do you think he will return? As you get older, you look more like him. Speak to me the way he used to speak to me. I find him too cowardly to want to be like. But I can't understand the pain he's been through it. And now I know that he tries to send me signals. These, these fires are signs of his suffering. That fire is a sign that Mademoiselle de Rosier gave him the letter and he read it. But why associate this fire with your father? Valier? I think I see something in your eyes. Something other than filial love. Do you have another love? Tell me. I'm in love with Simon. Pronounce his name with such sadness. I thought you would be shocked. One must never confuse nobility and love. The state of the mind, the state of the soul. How long have you known? I wanted to hear it from your lips. I have no one but you to cherish. <laughs> What about to the fay, the chambermaids, the stable boys, and the kings and queens? And you, my great sea captain, whom I shall awaken early tomorrow morning, so that like a buccaneer, he can guide the fishermen, 
through the waters of the Mediterranean. We must attend Sino's engagement party. Why? To see whether he is the coward you say he is. Too bad he didn't come to your little party. How old is he? 
magicians who assist you in these arts and teach you such marvels? I know no other art than prayer. I do not believe. I will not believe in the crimes you have been accused of, leader of my life cohort. You are too beautiful. Speak. Have I not rewarded you with all the honors, benefits, ornaments, hours of glory, and prestigious arms? Yes, my lord, you've been most generous with me. Bring me two crowns, one of anemones, the other of laurel. I want to crown the morose child and myself. Caesar, know that I have chosen my God. How touching. They are moved. Simon, get him out of here! I don't leave up my own free will. Timothy, will you show me the way with your whip? For Christ's sake, Simon, get him out of here! I'm afraid I must take my leave. Should you ever come to Paris, don't drop by my door, Monsieur Doucet. I never have liked child molesters. Get him out of here! Come on, Valier. I'll walk you home. I'll go with you. Why? Do you fear for your wedding night? Monsieur Lebel, 
Father Samishe. How nice of you all to have accepted my mother's invitation. And Simon, aren't you going to kiss Simon? He's over there on the divan. The divan, I can imagine, but Simon, it's more difficult. Try. I can't. Too bad. You'll arrive later then. Make a wish. My cake. <laughs> but it's made of earth. It's my favorite cake recipe. I'm willing to be polite to all of our guests, but having to eat earth is... Children are so ungrateful. Now, we shouldn't involve our guests in family feuds. I'm very touched by everything that you have done for my 19th birthday. There's more to come. Tomorrow morning, we shall go fox hunting. A late guest. Good evening, Countess. Simone, how nice of you to come. You see, I told you he was here. I was just passing by, so I thought I'd stop in and wish you a happy birthday and say goodbye. What a fine idea to kill two birds with one stone. Lydia didn't come with you? No. She stayed back at the hotel. We got a gift for you. It's a... Uh, Book on the fish of La Saint Jean. It just came out. You must thank Lydia. Valle loves fish. Let us leave them alone for a moment. Come and visit the wing of the homecoming. Have you noticed that I haven't cried since you came in? We're changing. We're getting older. Yes. We, we understand life better as we get older. I, I felt a bit silly last night. The village. The Indians haven't forgiven me. I lost my job this morning. I felt pretty stupid myself on the terrace last spring. We were young then, huh? Now, we're older. They're going to be very happy with, with Lydia. She's, she's got character. She's uh, rich and beautiful. I envy you. I won't be that lucky. I don't have the kinds of looks that attract beautiful Amazons. Don't say things like that, Valle. You're so nice. You're beautiful. Do you really think so? The day after tomorrow, we'll be leaving for Paris. Lydia has to settle some insurance business before we can go. They still haven't found out who blew up Lydia's balloon. Can I wash your back? Stop. Go away. I'm not happy, Valier. Why not? You have everything a man could want in life. You, you should be ashamed of saying such a thing. There are people who live in misery and poverty, yet they always find a way to see the bright side of life. I'm not sure this is what I want in life. I don't think I love Lydia the way I should. It's normal to be nervous about it. You didn't know many women before her. Maybe you're right. Guess I better get going. Thanks for your advice. Do forgive me if I don't show you to the door. see each other again. <laughs> Trips from Roberval to Harry and back are few and far between, you know. <laughs> if I judge by my father, they're very, very rare. When you 
finally going to say it? I can't. Try! What I feel for you is stronger than what I feel for Lydia. What is it called? Love. I love you, Valier. And I love you, Simon. No! Look at them loving each other. Look at them, Bilio. Look at what made you sick in the attic. I beg of you. That's new. You're crying now. You smell so good. So good. When she slapped you, it felt like she'd slapped me. It was real brave the way you blew up Liddy's balloon. You mean you're not the one who did it? It's a sign I should stay. My beautiful love. Not again. Aren't we ever going to see the end? Every time I come in, you stop at the same place. And this kiss. Love, love. Go on. Are you sure? We want nothing more. I shall be reborn today. May my breath and the heavens bear witness. I shall be reborn. I shall find sails filled with the rising wind, the prows sharp as a desire for the good life, and we shall be free, glorious and free, on the high seas, oh, beloved, beloved. My destiny must be fulfilled. I must die at the hands of man. And if it were in the hands of a woman, would that be acceptable? Lydian, Bilido, how nice. I told you he was here, didn't I? You vulture, Bilido. Do sit down. The performance has begun. I've seen enough for the time being. So this is how you spend your evenings after haying, Simon. I would have never guessed that Spawn was wear so little clothing. Let me explain. There is nothing to explain. I was silly and ridiculous. I am in love. And now I shall know that love is the worst of all lies one can tell oneself. What you said is very touching. What part are you playing? The woman betrayed, Countess. And in the theater one laughs as betrayed women. It's true. They're usually so amusing when they express their astonishment. I am expressing my pain, something no one here seems to understand. On the contrary, you are disarmingly convincing. Go on, your acting is wonderful. Did I talk about your pain, madam? It's not obvious, but everyone makes fun of it. They say you are mad. What is she talking about? Should I have told you that I met your husband in Lyon? Should I have told you that he is now the mayor of a commune? Should I have told you the truth, that he had me to dinner with his charming young wife and their two delightful little girls? Should I have told you the truth so that we could see your pain, madam? Should I have told you the truth that all men are liars? that I too was lying to myself. Don't touch me, Simon. We shall continue this discussion before the courts. I accuse you of destroying my aerostat. It wasn't me, Lydia. You've kept your word, young man. You have ruined my vacation. It wasn't me, Lydia. It wasn't me. Simon won't be leaving, Valier. Simon won't be leaving. Are you not feeling well, Mother? Are you all right? Stop punishing yourself like this. You mustn't believe everything she says. Tomorrow morning, we shall go hunting as planned. And then, at noon, I shall be leaving you. I shall be leaving. 
We must catch up with the hounds. I saw them head south. We can't hear the new dogs barking anymore. Stop. Let's go on a bit farther. We'll head south and we shall never stop again. No, here. I like this forest floor. I like the smell of the earth. Look over there. There's a hare caught in a snare. Is it still alive? I think so. Don't kill it. It's wounded. Then kill it. You know that I have great difficulty killing. Every move must be merciless. Steady, precise. Our entire life is revealed in the clarity and courage of our acts, Captain T. Listen, the hounds are returning. It is the bells of Saint Jean de Berbeuf. It is new. Already? The hour has come for me to return to Paris. I feel a bit sad about leaving you. I, I can't, madam. I won't have the strength to go through with it. Don't be like Sene, refusing to give Saint Sebastian the eternity he longs for. I shall be reborn, Sene. I shall be reborn. But first, I must die. If thou dost truly love me, enough talk. The last ship of France will be leaving soon. You were the only one who ever loved me in my entire life. Who else could I ask this of? Can love be that powerful? I believe it can. Please. No, I refuse. Will you speak to me to leave? Where will I find my strength if you abandon me? I leave you the manor house, all our land, the Mediterranean, and all my love. Don't cry. Will you never be rid of this habit? We must take leave of each other someday. It is the law of nature. Old trees must die so that the sunlight can reach the young saplings. Don't spoil my legacy. Stop crying. Stop whimpering. Play the part, Valle. Play the part. I shall never cry again. I'll play the part like you. Talk to me. The images have all faded now. Tell me of your beautiful love for Simone. We met one winter morning out of the frozen lake an immense white desert. He let me as cold. My European clothes didn't suit the climate. And I was cold. But not him. The sun was blinding me. But not him. understand the word he was saying. <laughs> we were so different. <laughs> well, 
Uh, yeah, I've been looking for you everywhere. Come with me. We can't stay here. Sunrise. I want you to see how beautiful it is. Look at the colors. There's nothing more beautiful than the sun rising over the lake. Have you ever noticed the reflection of the sun on the water? The reflection so delicate. Yes. The Water makes the sun look like a beautiful fiery lily. We must leave before daylight. Why not stay here in this attic where it all started? Once they've searched everywhere else, they'll come looking here. What's the worst that can happen? The whip? No, Valle. Death. An undeserved death. A horrible death. When they find your mother's body, they're not going to see her bags and her joy to be leaving here. They're not going to see how happy she is to be back in France at last. All they're going to find in the woods is the body of a woman who was strangled to death by her son. I saw her in my dreams. She was waltzing on the banks of the Seine. I can prove to them that she's happy at last. I'll explain how I was able to give them this ultimate proof of my love. Nobody will believe you. People are too simple-minded to understand things they don't feel in their own lives. But if you tell them they'll believe you... I spent my whole summer pretending. I don't want to pretend anymore. And I certainly don't want us to pretend. I drove the buggy up close. I brought some food and a gun for hunting. You'll see, Simon. Where we're going, nobody's going to find us. That, that logging camp was abandoned years ago. There, there's a little stream. In, in the morning, when you wake up, you can see pheasants and foxes. It looks like a scene right out of the Garden of Eden. We'll make a new life for ourselves. I'm so glad you're my friend now. I'm so happy you've forgiven me. You're a real saint. That's what they call mercy, Simon. You're merciful. It was worth it, eh? Everything I've done for you? It was worth blowing up Lady Anne's balloon, eh? Now, now you need me, right? Uh, the only thing I'm going to miss is when my mother, Madame Levine and Madame Scott, find out I left with the one who killed his mother in the woods. I can just see their faces. I won't be going to the seminary. No, no. It's, it's more important to, de to dedicate my life to a saint. We're going to pray so hard. We're going to confess our sins. We're going to tell each other all our bad thoughts. Hurry, take this to the carriage. They're going to bind us. Lily, why? Bally and me. We'll learn to get along. You'll see. I, I brought you back my diary. Uh, tell, tell me you're my friend. You're my friend, Dillado. Aren't you going to give me a kiss? Just a little saint's kiss? Never. Never, Bilodeau. Never. <laughs> on my wedding rings. Now you're my man, my one and only true. 
true love, the sun and the lake are our only witnesses for life till death do us part. You are my man, my love, my ultimate love for life till death do us part.